me ask you, have you ever studied so hard for a test and not gotten the results you were hoping for? Or even worse, overheard everyone else doing so much better than you despite your best efforts. In every class, there's always a star pupil who achieved amazing grades and you could just never fathom how they achieved this. This is how I felt in my own home. When I was seven, my brother showed me a game he made where you drove a car around a racetrack. And it wasn't the game itself that made it seem so amazing. It was the fact that he, someone just a few years older than me, had coded and made it on his own. This is where I started to like coding myself. The idea that I too could also make something just as impressive through coding filled me with a sense of purpose. But after a while, I realized this sense of purpose was overshadowed by another coder in the house. If you haven't realized by this point, my brother is a very skilled coder. As we both grew up together, his skills were becoming more apparent and his achievements were consistently stacking up higher and higher. I don't think I can remember a single competition he went to where he didn't win. Everything he made was very impressive and my parents made sure that he knew this. And as a cherry on top, my dad is a very dedicated computer science teacher. This meant that him and my brother were always having very technical conversations that I just felt like I couldn't participate in. Before I continue, I do want you to know that my family does love me very much. It's just um, my brother was basically a genius. His skill and my dad's dedication both inspired me a lot. However, this inspiration was buried underneath layers of self-doubt in my own capabilities. Every time he triumphed in coding competitions or excelled in something he wanted to do, it reinforced the fact that I felt like I would never be able to measure up to him. Everything I built or coded made me feel dull. It was almost as if they just weren't good enough. These negative thoughts were enough for me to stop pursuing a passion I had and drop computing altogether. A few years later, my dad was hosting the first Kale Coding Cup, where students from all around would participate and compete. Here's something crazy. You'll never guess who is competing. That's right, my brother. Ironically, making something similar to one of the first projects we'd ever made, a game. I turned up at the event to register students and help organize the room. And seeing as I was already there, I thought, hey, I might as well just join in anyway, right? The theme of this competition was arcade games, and I decided to recreate Frogo. It was a fairly simple game where a little frog would jump onto logs, avoid obstacles to get to the other side, a bit like Crossy Road. I went into this competition expecting nothing other than a participant award. Therefore, I was pretty happy when people actually enjoyed playing my game. But I was even more surprised when I found myself holding the second place award with nomination for graphics. The satisfaction I felt wasn't because I'd won something, but it was the realization that I had fun coding something, that other people also had fun playing, but the reward was good too. And if you're wondering how my brother did, unsurprisingly, he did well too. And of course, I'm very happy for him. This event led me to join more competitions, and though sometimes I won or lost, it didn't end up being about the accomplishment but more so the gratification that came from coding. It was nice when I succeeded, but it was still okay when I fell short. Whilst I had initial plans to, to pursue other things and drop computing altogether, through all this competition, I had rediscovered my passion and had become proficient as a computer scientist. 
Before I end my talk, I want to talk about one of the world's most profound scientists and make some comparisons. Let's see if you can guess who it is. In the late 19th century, an uncelebrated scientist was trying with difficulty to pursue her passion in physics and chemistry. Her path was overrun with obstacles, and as a woman of her time, her opportunities were limited. Yet her passion for discovery was so strong that she managed to make groundbreaking discoveries in radioactivity, shaping the course of science. Her name is Marie Curie. Now obviously I am not Marie Curie, but looking back, I also had some projects I made alongside my brother, which probably would have been pretty impressive if they weren't, if my brother wasn't so amazing at what he did. But at some point, you've got to look within and give yourself recognition for things you may not receive external gratification for. Your passion may not always lead to glory, but the experience you gain along the way may open doors you never knew were there. Thank you.